Anyone around Obama better be careful. They can be thrown under the bus at any minute. And that includes nations. He threw Israel under the bus. But apparently Putin doesn't throw his allies under the bus. That's all. So here we are, where the rubber meets the rogue. And now here we are. It's hour number three of the Savage Nation. The news keeps changing. The world's changing. The tidal wave is coming. I told you don't run from the tidal wave because they'll guarantee to catch you. The only thing you can do is run into the tidal wave and try to get under it and through it before it smashes down upon you. <laughs> it's an interesting analogy, by the way. I tell people not to worry because you can't change it anyway. I mean, I love the rally in Washington today by Donald Trump and Ted Cruz against the Iran deal. It was a, it was a spirited, important meeting. It made a point. It was, it was useful. Certain observations can be made. They knew that they couldn't change the course of events because Obama doesn't respect the Constitution. Obama manipulates the laws of the land and the Constitution, goes around the will of the people, goes around the will of Congress, and uses technicalities to override the will of the people and do a deal with Iran. But it was a nice point that they made. Trump looked more presidential than ever, and Cruz looked like a, a water boy. Cruz appears with a white shirt, and Donald always appears in a suit. That's a little lesson to you out there if you want to be in politics. Always wear a suit and tie, look like a president. Don't, don't look like a schmendrick who just jumped up on the stage like a groupie. Cruz looked like a groupie next to him. The Tea Party picked Cruz, and then Cruz invited Trump. Well, I would say it was very good of Cruz. However, it uh, didn't work out for him very well. Congratulations on the uh, rally. It was very important, very important message. Now you can all put pictures of yourself up on Breitbart and like Zelig appear everywhere else, but it has no meaning whatsoever. Now let's go to the callers on my, my show, my audience. All that matters to me is my show and my audience. And again, I want you to understand something. If you get on the radio with me, I know that I have a way of connecting with an audience where they think they know me and that I'm their, their friend. Well, unfortunately, that's not true. You have to understand radio is a very unique medium. And there's uh, ratings and whatnot. And I'll explain it again. There's a rating uh, metric called an AQH, every quarter, average quarter hour. I want you to envision the largest football stadium in America. Now I want you to envision an audience three times or four times larger than that football stadium. And that's what's listening to you as you speak on the show. So try to back off for a minute. Don't get intimidated. Just imagine you're coming before a microphone before hundreds of thousands of people to debate me or say something. Because that's what I do every second that I am on the radio, three hours a day. It's not easy to do, but go ahead, take, take your best shot, go for it. And I'm not here to challenge you. I really want to hear people who have intelligent things to say. But try to remember you're not talking to me alone. You're talking to this quadruple football stadium out there. People listen to you. B.O.B., Tim, go ahead. Jacksonville, you're on the Savage Nation. What's on your mind, Tim? Well, hi. What, I, what I'm thinking is that sometimes I feel as though we forget that, you know, there's more than three countries in the world, America, Israel, and Iran. And you made a very good point a couple minutes ago. Muslims don't play well with their neighbors historically. Especially yeah, and so, so what, what is your main point, Tim? Is that the point is, we don't have to always get involved in this. If Iran gets their nuclear weapon, like, like everybody's worried they're going to do, they're, they're not going to use it on us. They're not going to use it on Israel. They know the second they do that, while we might tolerate an attack on Israel, a nuclear attack on another nation, I honestly do not believe will ever be tolerated, especially not on us. And as much as the Iranians like to pretend they're martyrs, they don't want to lose their power. They're going to go after their fellow... But, Iranians. Tim, here's the problem. You're thinking as in a rational Western manner. You don't quite understand who's running Iran, I don't think, Tim. These are medieval... Uh, Neolithic throwbacks who have an apocalyptic view of Islam that is a perversion of Islam and they don't believe there can be world peace and the return of their Messiah who they call the Medi until there is world war. Do you know that? Oh yes, I know that. And who are they? So in other words, these, these Neolithics who Obama seems to embrace these Neolithics actually want a world war because that's their apoc apocalyptic vision that must occur in order for their Messiah, their Jesus, to come back to Earth. But it will start in the Middle East. And do you really think the, uh, the Arabs, the Jordanians, the Iraqis, the Pakistanis, you think they're just going to sit back and wait for us to come in and save the day? Well, yes, they will. Because, because right now, they're doing very little. 
They can't even stop ISIS. How are they going to stop Iran? Think about it. Jordan and Egypt have been, have been fighting ISIS now for a year with air, air power, and they've gotten nowhere. ISIS has gotten bigger. So what are they going to do against a major nation like Iran? I, don't, I, I feel as though they're not really giving their best effort. They, they quite frankly, expect that we're going to come in and save the day. And even assuming they, they start conquering the Middle East, what's going to happen? They're going to reform the Persian Empire? The EU is not going to be happy with a new Ottoman state sitting right there to the south. And, and what is the EU of child molesters going to do about it? The EU that's more concerned with sexual things and assisted suicide uh, than with things going on in the Middle East. You think the EU cares about human dignity and human life? They've done nothing about the trafficking in young girls that ISIS is conducting. So why would you think the EU will do anything? They're a paper tiger. They have no military. There is no military that the EU controls, is there? They're a bunch of cowards. They, they All right, so I've made my point. No, the EU will do nothing. They're worthless. Nothing. All they're concerned about are things that have no significance whatsoever. Global warming, you know, homophobia. That's their issues. That's their issues. So, okay, 855-407-282. Russian military intervened in Syria. That's all. Russia went around the, the threats of John Ketchup Kerry. They said, don't you dare fly into Syria. They did it anyway. They went into Syria via Iraq and Iran. And they landed some troops, heavy equipment, circumventing the strong U.S. pressure on Turkey, Greece, Bulgaria, and Cyprus to close their airspace to Russian shipments. But guess what? Russia made up its mind. So what is Washington now going to do? Tell me what they're going to do. Tell me what Obama's game is now. Now that the rubber of Russian transports have met the rogue president of the United States of America. Tell me what's going to happen right now. Heavy Russian transports were flying right over parts of Iraq. Right over parts of Iraq where U.S. forces are on the ground for guiding U.S. airstrikes against ISIS. They're sitting there on the ground. And we have spotter planes in the air. We have drones in the plane. And as a result of the Russians flying over northern Iraq, the U.S. military has slowed down their little fake war against ISIS because they're afraid of an accident in the sky. That's number two. This is a big deal. A very, very big deal. And what did Kerry do? Kerry threatened Russia. First time since 1973 that there's been a threat since the 1973 Yom Kippur War. We have not heard of the United States and Russia rattling sabers against each other. That's because we have lunatics communist lunatics, university types, a sorority I call them, running America. This, by the way, I cover in an entire chapter in my forthcoming and last nonfiction book, Government Zero. Think about why I called it Government Zero. Why did I entitle this new great book, my last nonfiction political book, Government Zero? What does it mean? Think about the title. On the face of it, a bell goes off and you say, Government Zero. Are you telling me we have a government of the people, by the people, and for the people? Are you telling me we have borders, language, and culture? No, we have government zero. We have a dictatorship. Now you get it? I'll be back to give you more insights right here on The Savage Nation. Join The Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE, 855-400-7282. Savage. The Savage Nation is sponsored by Swiss America, the only company I trust with my financial future. Call 800-289-2646 or SwissAmerica.com. Here's a big headline. Russia has defied the U.S. ban, is flying troops into Syria via Iran. It marks the first Russian-U.S. showdown over Syria. There's a huge, rapid military buildup on behalf of Assad, who uh, Obama has been trying to overthrow for years now. And here's a little other one for you, if you think the Russians are faking it. They're not John Kerry, okay? The world's largest submarine with nuclear warheads, the Dmitry Donskoy, NATO-coded typhoon, is sailing towards Syria. And aboard the, the Russian submarine are 20 ICBMs, each carrying 6 to 10 MIRV nuclear warheads. This is where the rubber meets the rogue president. 
Obama cannot bamboozle Putin the way he has bamboozled the drunk Boehner. I mean, maybe Obama thinks that, you know, they have blue eyes, so they're the same. Maybe Obama confuses John Boehner swilling the whiskey in the closet with what he heard about Putin. But make no mistake about it, this is where the rubber of the Russian transports squealing as they land on a tarmac in Syria meet the rogue president. I can tell you right now, this is not good for the world. You know, we used to see signs back in the 70s, and nuclear war is not good for children and other living things. Where'd all those grandmas go? Where'd they all go? There's something afoot here in this world right now, something almost biblical in magnitude. The worst sandstorm in 15 years is occurring in Israel right now. It's grounded all Israeli internal flights. Let's think about this. It's biblical. It's like God has thrown the dust in the eyes of the Jews. The worst sandstorm in 15 years. Flaring up. Stopping all Israeli internal flights. The Jews go about their business like nothing's going to change. Meanwhile, the friend of Obama, Khomeini, says Israel will not exist in 25 years. And then spits on the U.S. saying U.S. is the great Satan. This is who he's doing a deal with now. 20% of the American people support the deal. 80% oppose it. Congress opposes it. But the dictator in the White House is going around the people and Congress because he believes he's a pharaonic image. After two years siege, rebels conquer a Syrian air base in Idlib. Two years ISIS fought to take over that air base and they just won. That's why Russia is suddenly in there because they know that if they don't move in now, Assad will fall and all hell will break loose. So they're there. And by the way, Iran is there with them. Isn't that interesting? Russia and Iran why not want Assad to stay and do not want ISIS to win. Now do you understand why Obama has done nothing against ISIS? Does it finally come together for you? Which I've been telling you now for three months that ISIS is Obama's proxy army. Anyone put two and two together? Government zero? Join the Savage Nation. Call now, 855-400-SAVAGE. Savage. So the President of the United States has de devalued the United States military to such a point that now Russia has the largest nuclear submarine in the world. And I'm going to tell you a little bit more about that in a minute because it's on the way to Syria. In fact, it's almost there. It's in Syrian. It's on the way to Syrian territorial waters. The largest nuclear submarine in the world, Dmitry Donskoy, and it crossed the Dardanelles straight on Wednesday today on its way to Syrian waters. Listen to this very carefully if you think it's a joke. It's the world's largest nuclear submarine. It's accompanied by two anti-submarine warfare carriers, and it carries 20 intercontinental ballistic missiles and up to two hundred nuclear weapons Putin is not Boehner now they may both have blue eyes and Obama may think that they're both drunks and he can push them around and here's another little something for those of you who think you know everything even the smart Israelis were shocked this morning uh, that the submarine already reached the strategic strait the Dardanelles Strait linking the Black Sea to the Mediterranean because it only departed from its northern base September 4th, five days ago. The Israelis and other Middle Eastern military experts estimated that this Russian sub would need at least 10 days to reach the Middle East, but it got there in five. So what else do they have wrong about the Russian military? So it's twice as fast as they estimated? What else do they not know uh, that is going on? Well, I don't know. We'll find out soon enough. I know this. We're in the worst state with Russia that we've been since 1973 because of this monster in the White House who gets everything wrong. I don't blame him entirely. You got the idiot Susan Rice, the bumbler Susan Rice. You got the others in the White House, the sorority girls who should have been thrown out a long time ago. But we don't have a Congress. If we had a Congress, there would have been hearings to throw them out for what they've done already. Then you got Hillary Clinton They're asking her tough questions about emails, you hear? Instead of asking her what she had to do with the humanitarian crisis that has engulfed the world, they ask her about the emails and they're throwing sand in our eyes. Now you understand why? People say, why is ABC being so tough? I heard a talk show host this morning who considers himself a genius. So, oh my, he was shocked that the mainstream media is attacking Hillary now. Wow, he was just stunned. Well, he fell for it too. He was cheering on that they were attacking Hillary Clinton. 
for the email scandal. He thought that, wow, man, finally, 